Big Navi might be faster than you thought. Let's talk about it. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. So like many of you, I was very disappointed to find that the RTX 3080 and 3090 graphics cards have extremely little overclocking headroom and are essentially tapped out in their stock configuration. But then when AMD showed off their RX 6800, 6800 XT and 6900 XT graphics cards which were drawing less power and achieving much higher clocks, I began to wonder, will there be much higher overclocking headroom out of these new big Navi graphics cards? And it looks like we can finally stop wondering, at least for the most part, as it seems that a user over on Twitter who goes by the name of CapFrameX leaked some overclocking results for the RX 6800 and they look incredibly impressive. And by the way, there will be links to all my sources in the description below. And on top of that, if you do like this video, make sure to smash that like button. Let's try and get to two or 3,000 likes this time around. That'll be the goal. Let's see if we can hit it. But in any case, if we go ahead and take a look at what he posted here, he said that big Navi clock speeds that make Nvidia cry. And apparently this RX 6800 was able to hit a 2,532 megahertz average overclock at 60 degrees Celsius for the core temperature on the GPU and it was apparently a hundred percent stable now I'll say this um, we don't exactly know um, you know how good of a reflection this is on every single GPU that goes out there this could be just one really good GPU we don't know how much of a load on the GPU this is really producing or at least I can't really tell by looking at this image maybe I'm just not looking at it correctly and it, there's one other thing we do know about this though and apparently it was done on a reference design because he did uh, reply to someone who said what cooler is that and he said Reference design, the fan curve is customized. Now, when he says that the fan speed is customized, that means that, you know, in a program like MSI Afterburner, you make a custom fan speed that ramps up probably quite a bit higher. This is probably running at like 100% fan speed under load because otherwise getting 60 degrees Celsius with a low fan RPM just seems a little bit unrealistic. But if this does turn out to be true, it will be incredibly impressive as if we take the stock performance of the 6800 or the stock specs, it's apparently going to be, um, I believe, a 2.1 zero five gigahertz boost clock for the 1600 and you know if you compare that to 2500 megahertz or 2.5 gigahertz that would actually be a 19 percent increase over the stock 6800 boost clock and a 38 percent increase over the game clock now if you take that result and you translate it over to the 6800 xt it would be an 11 percent faster boost clock and a 24 percent faster game clock and then the same thing with the rx 6900 xt which again is incredibly impressive and though i gotta say i think that you know comparing it to the game clock might be a little bit unfair because although this was apparently the average clock run during this sort of benchmark here I just don't think that you know it's going to end up being a 30 percent you know 38 percent increase that you can squeeze out of this card that seems a little bit unrealistic heck 19 percent is incredibly high but if it does end up scaling to 19 percent or even close to that let's say you get you know 15 percent scaling out of that 19 percent overclock you could be looking at an RX 6800 which could be competing with an RTX 3080 and doing it for a lot less money so in order to prove my point here, I've gone ahead and taken the results from AMD, which by the way, you should take them with a grain of salt as they could be showing their uh, RX 6000 series graphics cards in their best light as many companies would do. But if we do take their results, you know, at their word, apparently when you compare the RX 6800 to an RTX 2080 Ti, which should be roughly as fast as a 3070, well, the RX 6800 gets an average of 92 frames per second at 4K and an average of 10 games, whereas the 2080 Ti gets 84 frames per second. So that would make the RX 6800 about 10% faster than the 2080 Ti with smart access memory enabled, which is pretty impressive already. But then if you factor in a 19% overclock on top of that, that makes it 29% faster. Faster. So if you compare that to the RTX 3080, well then the RTX 3080, at least according to hardware and box, is about 35% faster than a 3070 at 4K and 21% faster at 1440p, which means that at 4K, the 3080 would only be roughly 6% faster than an overclock 6800. And you know, the 3080 doesn't really have any overclocking headroom whatsoever. You might be able to squeeze 3, 4% more performance out of it. So, okay, now maybe it's 10% faster, but that's not a whole lot more, you know, and on top of that, you're looking at the 6800 having six gigabytes more VRAM. It has similar performance and it's doing it for $120 less. That's really, really good in my eyes. And then on top, that if you factor in the you know, 1440p results the 6800 might actually even be faster now if we take a look at the 6800 xt versus the 3080 here's where things get you know a little bit more in amd's favor you take a look at the 10 game benchmark once again at 4k and you'll see that the 6800 xt gets an average of 104 frames per second the 3080 gets an average of 103 frames per second which would make the rx 6800 xt 11 percent faster with the 2.5 gigahertz overclock and i'm not entirely sure whether or not 
not they use smart access memory here. I don't think they did, but I may be wrong. But either way, an 11% increase is pretty impressive. And we do got to remember, though, if these results are showing smart access memory on all of them, uh, NVIDIA will be implementing their own version of that. So these results could end up looking a little bit less impressive whenever NVIDIA gets that into their driver. But, you know, either way, again, 11% faster with that 2.5 gigahertz overclock and doing it for 50 bucks less. Hey, that's pretty good because, again, you're getting a whole lot more memory. And then if we take a look at the RX 6900 XT and we compare it to the RTX 3090, a Reddit user saved me a whole bunch of time here and labeled all the bar graphs here so I didn't have to do it this time. And apparently the 6900 XT on average would get at 4K about 117 frames per second, whereas the 3090 would get 113 frames per second, which would make the RX 6900 XT with that 2.5 gigahertz overclock and uh, smart access memory as well as potentially rage mode enabled about 15% faster. So yes, it's definitely a best case scenario for AMD and definitely not a fair comparison as not only is NVIDIA not overclocking their 3090 here, but it also doesn't have smart access memory enabled. So not really entirely fair, but just to see that AMD could potentially get up to a 15% increase on average over NVIDIA, at least in a best case scenario, that's really, really impressive stuff. And I think it's going to put you know a lot of pressure on NVIDIA to get that RTX 3080 Ti out as well as that smart access memory into their driver as fast as they can. So this is just what happens here when you get really good competition between two companies it forces people to drop their prices down as well as put new types of innovations into the products out onto the market so that's really really good stuff to see i'm really glad that amd was actually able to make some impressive graphics cards this time around and i'll be trying the absolute hardest to get a 6800 as well as 6800 xt because like i said that 6800 while i do think it should probably be you know maybe 50 bucks less and be 530 dollars even at 580 dollars if you can overclock that thing especially with like a third party card and it does end up being able to hit 2.5 gigahertz on average when you absolutely throw all that efficiency out the window well that's really good stuff and you're talking about a card for 120 bucks less basically getting you the exact same performance now we don't entirely know for sure yet what that ray tracing performance is going to look like but i think it's not going to be too bad i i'm kind of expecting it to be maybe on par with the rtx 2080 ti somewhere around there maybe even a little bit better and to me that's definitely good enough as the majority of the games that i play don't really use ray tracing so that's not really a huge factor for me, but you know, going forward into the future, ray tracing is going to become a standard thing that you see in a lot of games. So they do need to have it and they have to have it working pretty good. Um, but the one thing that they have to worry about is DLSS. I mean, I was just playing some uh, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War earlier this morning just to test it out on the RTX 3070. And you know, DLSS works pretty good in there. So if AMD doesn't have a response to that fairly soon, it's going to be bad news for AMD, especially if it ends up being implemented in a global way where you you can just feed any image into the graphics card and it'll take it at 1080p and upscale to 4k and just give you a whole bunch of extra performance AMD should definitely be worried about that but I think for me the biggest factor between these two graphics cards if I'm going to be choosing right now is going to be the driver stability I know AMD had some troubles with that with the Navi cards originally so I think they really have an opportunity to prove themselves here I'll be getting it on day one if possible I'll be getting a 6800 or 6800 XT whatever I can get and I'll definitely be reporting to you what the driver stability is like because for me again that's the biggest factor they have some really, really good performance here. The prices are pretty dang competitive. Now it's just down to AMD to, you know, prove themselves how stable is it. But hey, that's just what I think. What do you think about the overclocked RX 6800 results? Do you think it's actually going to be able to hit 2.5 gigahertz? Or do you think that's just a little bit too high? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. Oh, and as well, I just want to say thank you to everyone who attended the live stream the other day because everyone who donated money, I was able to finally get a new chair so it's much nicer there's no more squeaking and all my videos should be a little bit better going forward but again i'll see you in the next video if you made it to the end of the video be sure to drop a like every time you do so nvidia and intel drop prices also if you want to see more click here you won't be disappointed